Hi, welcome back. I'm Scientist Kate. This is Grade 3, Weather and Climate, Lesson 3.6, Evaluating Evidence About Climate, Part 2. For this lesson, you will need a pencil or something else to write with and notebook page 54. Are you excited to do science today? I'm so excited because I'm hoping today we're going to get to decide which island the orangutan reserve should be on. Are you ready to do some science? Let's go. All right, do you remember part one of this lesson? We found our birthdays on the average temperature and average precipitation graphs for Seattle and decided what we would wear on an upcoming birthday. In this part of the lesson, we're gonna be sorting evidence cards. So we're trying to answer the question over many years, which island is the best for an orangutan reserve? And we decided that when we evaluate new evidence, we need to be looking for one year of data, not just one day or one month. So if we're actually gonna look at what the climate of these islands are, we need to be aware of what the temperature and precipitation are like throughout the entire year. We don't want to look for a month of data anymore. That helped us in chapter two, figure out what the weather was gonna be for the next few days, but we're moving on past that and we wanna now know what the weather will continue to be for many years so that we can make the best choice for the orangutans. All right, are you ready to sort some evidence? Remember to think about what we're looking for in good evidence. We're looking for official measurements like degrees Fahrenheit and millimeters, and we're looking for a year of data rather than just a day or a month. All right, here we go. Take a look at this evidence card. It's showing us Art Island's daily high temperatures in August. Do you think this is a strong piece of evidence or a weak piece of evidence? when we argue for which island we think the reserve should be on. Think about it and point to the side you think it should go to. This is a weak piece of evidence. Even though it does take measurements in degrees Fahrenheit, which is great, it's only showing us a month and we decided we're looking for a full year. All right, let's go. What do you think about this? It shows us Blue Island's high temperatures in August. Yeah, that's a weak piece of data for our purpose too. What about this one? Creek Island's daily high temperatures in August. Yep, you're really getting the hang of this. This is a weak piece of evidence. What about this one? Blue Island's total precipitation in August. Hmm. It does take the measurement in millimeters, which is the official way that meteorologists measure. But it's only giving us a month's worth of information and we want a year. So we're gonna put it in the week pile. How about this evidence card? Creek Island's total precipitation in August. Yep, that's week two. Can we get a strong piece of evidence, please? Oh, what is this? The 2010 average high temperatures on Arc Island. Hmm. Is this measured in degrees Fahrenheit? Yep, I see up the side, temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. We're good to go. Does this show us a month or does it show us the full year? It shows us the full year. Awesome. So this is definitely a piece of strong evidence. Woohoo! Okay, what about this? The 2015 precipitation on Arc Island, it rained a lot all year. Well, this is telling us all year. Oh yeah, but it's not telling us an actual measurement in millimeters. So we have to move on and put it in the weak pile. All right, what about evidence card 26? The 2015 temperatures on Blue Island were that it was hot all year. Is that strong or weak? Yep, that is weak data because it doesn't have an official um, meteorologist measurement. We can't just say, oh, it was hot, it was cold, it rained some. Those aren't official ways that we measure. Okay, what about this? Yeah, this is also strong data. It's showing us the average high temperatures on Blue Island for the whole year. What about this evidence? Yeah, this is also strong data. It's showing us the average high temperatures on Creek Island. 
You're doing great. What about this one? 2010's monthly total precipitation on Arc Island. Hmm, I see that it's measured in millimeters right here. Does it show us a full year? Yep, it sure does. We're gonna put it in the strong pile. All right, so we've sorted all of our evidence cards and I'm gonna get rid of all of the weak ones. We don't wanna use those anymore because they're not gonna help us strongly and confidently and boldly and accurately make an argument about our island. So here's what I want you to do. Take out page 54 from your notebook that I told you to get at the beginning of the lesson and let's review the directions. Directions, number one, List the evidence card numbers for cards with strong evidence for comparing and predicting the weather for many years in the left column. And over here, you're gonna put the weak evidence card numbers in the right column. And then answer these two items using the evidence card that is shown. So I'm gonna pause the video and I want you to finish page 54 and then meet me back here. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Hi, welcome back. Did you finish page 54? Great. While you were gone, I took our strong evidence and I sorted them out into a table so that it's easier for us to understand. So I put the evidence cards here that were associated with Arc Island. And I put the evidence card here that's associated with blue. And this is Creek Island. So as you can see, we have all of the temperature data for all three islands for a full year. That's great. That's really going to help us with our argument. Are we missing any data for th that we might need to make our decision? Yeah, we're missing precipitation data for Blue Island and for Creek Island. So that's kind of a problem because we can't compare unless we have all of the data for all of the islands. Does that make sense? We can't just guess about what a year's worth of precipitation would be like in Blue and Creek Islands. We need to know it for sure because scientists don't just guess at things. They have to have evidence to support their arguments. And we're scientists. All right, so we know that we're in need of some data and there's really only one way to get it. We need the help of the Wildlife Protection Organization. So I'm gonna give them a call this weekend and see if I can get some more information from them. But do you remember what data we need to ask them for? Yeah, we need the precipitation data for Creek Island and Blue Island. And for what time period should I ask them? Is it cool if they just send us a month of data? No. We need a full year of data about precipitation on Creek and Blue Island. Now, how should this data be measured? Is it okay if they send us something that says it rained a lot all year? No. Is it okay if they send us something that was measured in buckets? No. What about in, um, if, they send, if they sent us something measured in feet? No. We have to have it measured in what? Millimeters, nailed it. All right, perfect. All right, I'm gonna call the Wildlife Protection Organization and get that data from them. But in the meantime, we're gonna do another episode of Ask Scientist Kate. And today's letter comes from Shayla, who's in third grade in Chicago, Illinois. And her letter says, Dear Scientist Kate, I saw in the last episode that people believe climate change causes there to be more natural disasters like hurricanes and floods. Why does this happen? Thanks, Shayla. Shayla, this is a great question and a really important one. So thanks for asking. As you may know, the earth is warmed up by the light and heat of the sun. Did you already know that? I bet you did. Well, most scientists think that the earth is being warmed up slowly by human pollution. We're basically making a blanket around the earth and it's trapping in too much of the sun's heat. 
kind of like when you go under the blankets in your bed and it starts to kind of get hot and stuffy in there and you need to come out for air, you know, really cool off. Well, right now we have a blanket around the earth and we're really slowly warming our planet up. And the problem with that is this. You can see on this piece of weather data that land, in orange here, we have the land and the atmosphere slowly heating up. And maybe that doesn't look too important, but if we look right here, the ocean is really heating up a lot. And that's a problem because big storms like hurricanes use the energy from the warm ocean to become very strong and powerful. Heat is a form of energy. So the energy, the heat energy in the water gets transferred to the hurricanes and the hurricanes can get really big and powerful and they can cause a lot of damage and they can even cause loss of life for humans and animals. Another problem is this, the melting of ice. So you know how the earth has a North Pole and a South Pole? Both of those poles are covered in ice caps. And as the earth warms up, that ice starts to melt. That's a problem and not just for polar bears. As that ice melts, it falls into the ocean like you're seeing in this picture, and it causes the ocean to rise because there's more water there. And when ocean levels rise, it can cause flooding for areas that are on the coast, which means areas that are near the ocean. This can damage people's houses, businesses, their property, and it can also cause loss of life for people and animals. This is a big problem. Another problem caused by climate change is desertification. Ooh, that's a big word. Desertification is a fancy science word that just means that areas that used to be really wet have become dried out. And that's a problem because many areas in the world are threatened by desertification. You can see all of these yellow places are places where the desert area is starting to spread. That's not good because we can't grow food in deserts. They're too dry and, and usually too hot. And we could run into the problem of not having enough food to feed all the people on earth because our farmland is slowly turning into desert. That's not a good thing. So Shayla, thank you so much for asking that important question about how climate change can cause more natural disasters. Great science question. All right, thanks so much for joining me for lesson 3.6, Evaluating Evidence About Climate, part two. I'm gonna call up the Wildlife Protection Organization, get us that precipitation data, and we're gonna meet back here for lesson 3.7, where we are going to finally make our decision about which island is the best one for the orangutans. So I'm excited, I can't wait to see you next time. Stay safe, stay curious. Adios.